The last thing that they're not tolerant of, obviously, is sexualities and gender freedom. So you and I are just not part of that world. We don't but belong. But we have in that queers world. for Palestine, right? And that's I think I think I told you in my email. I don't know, like I can't, I can't remember, but I was like, it just boggles wow. my mind when I see people say queers for Palestine. I'm like. Sure, the, the, the place, the region, Palestine, okay, but like the people who rule it and the main ideology doesn't accept queerness. Wow. Hey everyone, I caught myself a really, really good one today. So I've been really excited. This person reached out to me and um, what they're gonna talk about is super important. It's why I pushed them to the front here. And um, because I believe this conversation, I don't really know how what conversation we're gonna have, but I believe it's gonna be a very, very, very important conversation. So with that, thank you everyone for you know subscribing, watching, liking, giving this to people who need to see it, helping this channel grow like mad. I do appreciate you all so much. You know, I cannot do this without you and I do not get these amazing guests without all of you watching and pushing the trajectory of these interviews up the ladder. So with that, today I have this beautiful human named Lena, and Lena's going to introduce herself, and then we're going to get into a great conversation. Hey, Lena, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm honestly so excited. I've seen so many of your interviews and like just the range of people that you talk to. I'm just so excited to be here. Excellent. Um, so I'll try to just briefly introduce myself. Um, my story, like a lot of second generation Arab Muslims start with a brave father coming over with no money. So my dad came from the Middle East, he came from Syria, and he didn't speak the language. Um, he was extremely culturally religious, culturally Muslim, um, but he wasn't very like studious about the religion. He came over and he actually ended up falling for my mom, who was an American woman, um, and they raised um, a Muslim American family in Detroit, Michigan, or Dearborn, Michigan, whereabouts. Um, I'm the oldest daughter, so there was a lot of pressure on me to perform in a certain way, to be a certain way in a Muslim family. Um, I was expected to wear the hijab. I was expected to uh, act a certain way, you know, perhaps be married. I'm almost 30 years old. I'm not married. Um, so there was a lot of expectations on my life because of religion and because of uh, the culture of the Middle East. And along the lines of growing up, I actually discovered that I was not only not really Muslim, I was also bisexual. I had attractions to women. And that was something that I held in my chest till I was 22 years old. Um, and I came out to my family in the same breath as saying, I'm in love with someone who happened to not be a woman. So it was just like a very confusing time for them. And we just kind of exploded. During my college years, actually, if I can backtrack, sure. I was involved in um, the social justice because I couldn't actually advocate for myself. Back in those days, I was like, I'm a liberal Muslim. Muslims, Muslims are, you know, I, I literally, I have a picture of myself, Muslims for Bernie, because, you know, he's Jewish and, and I was so about Bernie. I, I was like, I'm a liberal Muslim and I'm going to do the thing. Like, I don't wear a scarf. I don't like pray, but I'm still a Muslim no matter what. And I was just going to do that thing. And also, again, because I couldn't actually fight for who I was, a gay not really Muslim person, I just decided to fight for whoever else I could find. So I was involved in the LGBT groups at, in college. And then in 2020, I got involved with the Black Lives Matter protests. Now, there's different shades of that. But at the end of the day, I would say that I got pretty deep into like the far left. Okay. Um, Because I was just kind of like, you know, I want to fight the system and the system is, you know, religion. The system is patriarchy. And I right. just thought that the left was the people to be with. Right. Um, so fast forward to today. Um, I'm actually working as an art teacher. I would consider myself to be moderate and don't participate in protests. Now there was a huge like story that led to that. Um, but the reason I actually reached out to you today, Buck, is because what I'm seeing right now on the streets in Ann Arbor, I'm actually in Ann Arbor, Michigan, um, okay. home of U of M, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing people setting up with like pro Hamas, um, things. And 
these young, colorful haired LGBT kids are not understanding like who they're actually supporting. So that's like my main story that I'm reaching out to you for is because I kind of lived both sides. Like my dad is extremely culturally Middle Eastern. We used to visit the Middle East all the time. I dodged being married a couple times, like before I even graduated high school. And I had him trying to control me with the Sharia law technically in right. in America. Yeah. And and I've managed to escape it. And now I'm seeing Americans championing for this thing to be brought here that I the reason that I can walk around in a spaghetti strap is because there's no Sharia law. And I came on here specifically like this with my shoulders out and my hair out because this is like this is everything that I can't do because of Islam. And I want to be so clear to these young kids. They they, they don't know what they're messing with. It's dangerous. And so that's that's my introduction. I kind of got into like the the juice of it, but that's like it's not really about my story. And I want to be so clear about that. I am just a person, and the reason that I can speak is because I'm in America. I can speak freely is because I'm in America. And it's not because wow. I'm in the Middle East wow. where you know they they're controlled. So wow. the only reason I'm coming on here is because I have a voice, and I want to speak for people who do not have a voice. Wow. I mean, you you, brought, you actually brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> I'm not kidding because I just oh, I have to get my shit together right now because it makes me emotional. It does because I know obviously I've never been in your shoes. But I hear you and I see you and I know people aren't hearing and seeing people like you right now, especially in America. And I don't know why I feel so emotional about it. And I think it's because I think people aren't hearing and seeing the reality of what they're doing on these campuses. And I think they're being misled. And I think it's hurting people like you who are you still do you consider yourself still a Muslim? No, no. I looking back, I don't think I was Muslim since I was like 13. Like, like, wow. honest, honestly, since I was like cognizant and was like yeah. conscious of things and reading because I, I'm, I've always been a reader. I Great. I challenge all any of these protesters, protesters to please read the Quran, read it in English, oh, go, go to sunnah.com and type in things like intercourse, child marriage, Brilliant. you know, Brilliant. women, just anything. And just read the nonsense that these men, men right. talk about. Um, so wow. ever since I was young, I was like, I am not subscribed to this, but I had to yeah. live a lie. I had to hate myself. And yeah. again, I'm the oldest of there's three girls after okay. me. Wow. Really? There's and how girls. are they? I don't know. I don't talk to them. So did you literally cut yourself off from your family? I was unable to talk to them. My parents oh, kind of shit. put themselves between me because I'm a bad influence now. Of course so you are. Religion tears apart families. Theology like this tears Extremism, apart families. Extremism, right? Extreme, extremism. Extreme extremism. religion. That's and right. And I want to be very clear. There's so many cool Muslims. That's right. I I'm, not I, saying, I I'm not saying Islam is, is a bad religion. Any religion can be like moderate. However, in this specific religion, unfortunately, in, in, in like liberalism. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Islamophobia if you if you want it's, to talk about Islam. Can you like explain it, to us the difference? So I would love for you to thank you again, Lena. Oh my God. I swear I feel so lucky to have you here right now because I have been in such a weird state because of all this. And I'm looking at these young people going, they're so dis they're being so brainwashed and they don't even know what they're saying and i can see it all and so for you to step up and literally acknowledge what my brain is thinking is everything to me and i think so many people will benefit from what you're saying right now because you're you are you are that and i want to scream it from the rooftops honestly. i can't even imagine i do so i can't even imagine what you're saying so i want to ask you this question and, and I hope anything I ask you here today is not disrespectful or rude. And I hope you ask know everything I ask. Book. Thank you so much that I ask from my heart and not from any other space. So, so there's Muslim and then there's Islam. Mm. What? So can you explain an Islamist and an Islam? So I was reading something where Islamism is the extreme miss part right or mm -hmm. can you, i'm sorry i'm not gonna can you just explain that to us well so i'm i'm not gonna claim that i'm a linguist but okay great no that's right sure 
it's just basically the difference between saying someone someone's a Christian and Christianity. I Christians, see. Christians and Christianity. Islam and Muslims. It's just okay. like different versions of the noun. Now, like with politics and like TV and right. news, you know, they're going to coin certain phrases. That's so right. Islamism is yes. definitely used for sure to ex to describe like Sharia law and extreme. extremism, right? It's right. So to say someone is a Muslim, you're not saying he's an extreme person. If That's he's an right. Islamist, he might be extreme. Okay. Okay. He might be extreme. I see. Yeah, right. So I'm I was always trying to distinguish. So if you are a Muslim, you are an Islam. You so if you're a Muslim, you follow the re religion of Islam. You and follow. just like Christianity, there's several sects of Islam. People don't even realize this. There's but you could be born a Christian. You could be born a like I was born in Christianity, but I don't mm -hmm. practice Christianity. So mm -hmm. am I still a Christian? Like can a Muslim be born right. into being a Muslim but not practice Islam? So the same way that some Jewish people, it's like ethnically Jewish. Yes. Islam yes. is almost the same. It's okay. not the same, but it's like it's Got so it. ingrained in culture right. that it's like even if you don't like there's so many Muslims, Muslims in yeah. Dearborn who right. like they have tattoos, they eat pork, they drink, and they're yes. still Muslim because it's right. a cultural thing. So it's, it's like like Judaism. Or like Jews. Exactly. Like yeah, right. that's it's like, that's it's right. Like a, it's an ethno culture thing. And it's Got not it. the same, but it's similar. similar. Um so it. again, it's with politics, it's all gotten muddied, you know. Uh more than muddied, it's become a volcano. Basic. <laughs> It is sick. Okay, so let's move forward because this is so powerful. So here you are. You you are literally a liberal. I was that way too, and I'm just like. But I also equate that to age. Do you not equate yeah. a lot of this stuff going yeah. on the university as age? For sure. I mean, I was young. I was like in college. I was like, screw the system. I want to fight. And and That's it's right. like. I had to get my ass beat by a cop a couple of times. And yeah. then I was like, wait, yeah. where are all my, where are all my <laughs> revolutionary comrades when my fucking shit is bleeding? Where are they? They just left you on the ground. <laughs> that's, Literally. That's about right. <laughs> no, I tell you, like, I kid you not, Buck, when it was like me and I'm okay, I'm mixed, you know, my mom's white, but right. I still consider myself an Arab girl. Sure. And, you know, people sure. look at me, they're like, you're a little different. You smell spicy. Right. Yeah. So they're like, I'm surrounded by all these white liberals. They're running. They're getting <laughs> off. And I'm getting my ass beat. And I'm like, wait, this doesn't add up. No. Like, why am I getting my ass beat for your ideologies? Brilliant. And then I have to, like, so I just kind of step back because, like, yeah. it's not to, not to go too extreme, but these kids on, on, the, on the front lines of the protests, yeah. when they're standing up against the line of cops, yeah with these batons they, they don't realize that this is like actual warfare That's like if right. they're not willing to like go forward with their life they need to just go go back home That's and do right. something peaceful and that's what i realized yeah. like it's it's either do a peaceful protest or or don't like you can't have in between because it's going to become violent a hundred percent it is. That's what pro I believe in protest. Don't get me wrong. I think yeah, everyone has yeah. the right. That's why I love this country and I'm all about freedom of speech. And it's why I let people say what they need to say, because then that means I can say it back. Right. I can say what I need to say. That's what free speech is. But there has to be they're not doing free speech. They're literally blocking Jewish people from going into class. They're blocking anyone who's a Zionist. They're they're doing these things that aren't peaceful protests. They're camping on and creating huge. Those aren't. That's not legal. I would be so furious because I almost went back to school to get a master's in 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 fashion. I would be so furious if I couldn't go to my finals right. because of these jokers. That's right. Like I would be like, you don't even know what you're protesting for. If if the people that believed your ideologies came here yeah it would not be a good show for you but That's the one right. thing that i wanted to come yeah. on here and say yeah, one thing right. that i fear right. is that these these gaza encampments i actually went to one because i was seeing them all over youtube yeah you know i'm yeah. like i'm just gonna go look great so it was like a little mini date with my boyfriend i'm like let's just go take great. a walk no great. we're not gonna to take a video we're just we're just gonna go look and observe okay. And it was scarier than I, what I thought. It's not them yelling and screaming. It's not them causing chaos. Okay. It's, 
it's the Muslims praying with the others. Like it's it's literally like a conversion camp. Like they're wow. using this ideology like free Palestine, you know, anti capitalism, free the world, but also let's be Muslim at the same time. <laughs> that's 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 freaking scary. Yeah. That's scary to me. Yeah. So I'm seeing I'm seeing like um quite a few young liberal white women like my mother like my mother mm. like my mother i just want to repeat that one more time like my mother who are converting now um and wow. i just don't see it i just don't see it ending as a good path because like my mom is estranged from her oldest daughter i'm her old i don't talk to her um i'm sorry that makes me sad it's sad Seriously. it's sad it is, it is but sad. It's, it's like extremist ideologies will completely rob a person's like mental capacity true and that's why like this like islam is truly one of them like the most dangerous religions um in the world right now because it's so extreme um when it's taken to that level there are that's liberal right. muslims there are peaceful muslims there the are majority of them are but yeah when but when the extreme side is so extreme, it's very difficult. Well, the problem with that also is then everyone gets lumped into it. All Muslims are bad. All Muslims are Islamists. Right. All Muslims are extreme. You know that. It's the same with the trans. I could literally lay that over top of trans stuff, right? right. I get lumped into the insanity and the trans. Right. I'm not part of that nonsense. But because I'm trans, right, I get completely put into that. People attack me constantly. I'm like, but wait, I'm literally telling you something opposite of what them. But just because I look and am them i'm same with you if yeah. you're gonna get lumped into that as a muslim you're a bad person you're indoctrinating people you're an extremist you're but but i really want to go back to the encampment that you went and you mm. saw it in your own eyes and you remember everybody mm. we are talking to an actual person who was born into muslim okay and yeah she sees things in a way you and i will never unless you are muslim see just again i'm gonna thank you lena it means the world to me that you are saying something that not a lot of people are saying they're not or they're not getting heard and maybe that's what i should say yeah. do, you, do you think I'm more sure... muslims are saying what you're saying i mean i don't think muslim people are saying what i'm saying because for Why? the majority i would say that most muslims are like pro-palestine right now like I wouldn't oh, say wow. that they're, okay. and again, I have to reiterate, I'm an ex-Muslim. That's right. I, okay. I have to so, keep remembering that. That's right. right. I'm, I'm, I do not subscribe to the religion of Islam. And I have okay. to be clear that I'm actually pretty against the religion of, of Islam. Okay. And, okay. and if, if you'll allow me, I'll give you a couple pointers yes. of why I'm actually very against Islam. Excellent. And it's not Islamophobia to criticize a religion, no, just it like it's not. not you know, you, you should be able to criticize any um, institution. And the fact that you can't criticize Islam is by design. That's Islam right. With anything. With anything. The word Islamophobia is actually invented by Iran. You know, it's like a political word. That's so, right. Yeah. So first, my first point is that Islam is not a religion of tolerance. Um, if you look up in the religious texts, you actually have three days after leaving the religion of Islam before someone is sent to kill you. So if I were living in a Muslim country and I decided, hey, mom, dad, I'm not Muslim anymore. I only have three days to go and repent before someone is going to be sent to kill me just to save the family honor. Because she's, oh. well, she's going to hell, so let's go kill her. This is in the law. And I, I challenge any Muslim to come and, and fight me on it. Um, is that called Sharia law? Is Sharia that what... law. Sharia yes. Law. So once again, if... If we practice a lukewarm, watered-down version of Islam, great. That's good for everybody. Yeah. But if you go all the way and you practice it how they're they're written to practice it, yeah. You know, just like Christianity, you're not supposed to eat shellfish. That's right. But but th does that kill people if you don't eat shellfish? That so that's the difference. You yeah. get, you get what I'm saying? Yes. So um, the other way they're not tolerant is they're not tolerant of other religion. And it's very clear because in the historical text, they go out and they kill people. And it's undeniable they go out and kill in the name of religion. The last thing that they're not tolerant of, obviously, is sexualities and gender freedom. So you and I are just not part of that world. We don't but belong But we have in that queers world. for Palestine. Right. And that's, I think, I think I told you in my email, I don't know, I can't, I can't remember, but I was like, it just boggles wow. my mind when I see people say queers for Palestine. I'm like, 
sure the 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 place the region palestine okay but like the people who rule it and the main ideology doesn't accept queerness there might be some happy queer people but yeah um, but the basis of it, they're just like, you're dead. <laughs> Go right. ahead and try to be queer in Palestine. That, it goes on to my next point where in countries where Islam has infiltrated the government, women and gays suffer the most. Oh, wow. Just um, wow. over the board. Uh, they have less rights. They're killed more often, yeah. et cetera. I don't even have to go into it. The third point, marriage, hijab, and last, lack of education are used as tools to control the female population. Um, so I'm, I told you I was writing a book. I was offered marriage like three different times and I wasn't even 18 yet. And my mom, again, a white American <laughs> woman who went to public school was so indoctrinated that wow. she was trying to convince me as a 16 year old, you should marry him. You should get engaged. He's 24. You should got, you should be engaged for like two years. She was trying to like convince me to get groomed by a 24 year old that I had never even met before because religion said so. Religion said it's okay. You never met the guy? No, his mom saw me somewhere and called my mom. That's how it works. It's like recruitment. Oh, women are God. traded. Women are just, girls are just traded. Oh, God. The last point child marriage is a real problem in Islam. Um, Aisha is a very famous wife of the Prophet. Okay. And if you look, if you look into her, she was six years old when she was married to the prophet. Six. Wait, what's her name? Aisha. Aisha. Unfortunately, my sister-in-law is named Aisha, which makes me very, very sad. It's one of the most popular names in the Muslim world or in the world period. And she was a child bride who was married at six and at nine. Oh, my God. And, and there's scholars across the Muslim world that will, A, try to hide it. B, try to say that they matured faster in the desert. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, this is not something to laugh at, but. No, it's, it's fucking funny. It's funny. Like <laughs> they matured faster back then. Or B, they would say, actually, it's like dog years. No, nine <laughs> actually means 17. <laughs> like, <My> God. <laughs> so you what? never get a real answer on this, right? Yep. It's just there. It's, it's just there. And because it's there, because of the actions of one man 1,400 years ago, now in Yemen, in Yemen right now in 2024, there okay. are nine-year-old girls getting married because of Sharia law. So tell me that Islam is something that's okay for America or for the world in general. I, I mean, I, I, I'm speechless. I mean, yeah, I'm speechless because we don't know this, right? This is not being spoken about here. All we're hearing is save Palestine. All we're hearing is Jews are bad. All we're hearing is that Israel is colonized. All we're hearing is that Israelis are bombing Gaza and killing everybody. All we're hearing is that. We're not hearing anything about extremism. We're not hearing about Hamas. We're not hearing anything about a war. This is a war. I look at this as a war. Hamas an bombed. ideological war. It is an yes. ideological war what is wrong with everybody and listen like honestly buck this whole palestine versus israel thing it's kind of funny that people are just getting involved now that's right I, I was like 10 years old that's right 10 years old and this is how indoctrinated i was my family would just bring me to these marches like free palestine and yep, it's yep. just it's just been going on forever forever and that's people right. are just now getting involved because of the media frenzy that's right um that's but right. the Thank last thing, actually, that. I want to say, okay. this is my last point, allowing Islamic extremist ideologies to fester like these protests. Yeah, it's not actually encouraging freedom of speech. Allowing to fester is actually going to result in far right nationalisms, nationalistic people being researched. Just like if you do any sort of research in Europe. This has been happening since the oh Arab Spring when there were so many wars in the Middle East that all these like migrants are coming. Yes, yes. The more migrants come and the more the local laws change because of their governing power. Yes. The more there's like a resurgence in like far right. Of so course. unless we as a like as a global society can find a way to like balance, balance. each other's rights. Because right now, like, most of the people are like, I'm victimized, I'm whatever, and they will literally, like, take over an entire town, and then now you're having, like, nationalists trying to fight back. So it's, 
it's causing more tension than it is resolutions. Agreed. With with all these protests. Agreed. Is, don't you uh, also think that's the ultimate goal here? Yeah. Because that's why they're gaslighting and manipulating. So, so you know, you can use young people. You, you, we're just proving it. Young people are so easily malleable and so easily influenced. I was one of those people. You were. We were easily yep. influenced. That's why they're going for a younger generation. I've seen stuff on the internet. This is blowing my mind, friend. I'm seeing stuff on the internet where <clears throat> parents are putting their children into free Palestine. Little six-year-olds are carrying banners, Amer little white American kids, free Palestine, yep. queers. Yep. I'm like, what? You're literally indoctrinating your own child into some, something you don't understand. It's it's just because it's popular. But it's date, but I don't care. Like, okay, what am I gonna even use right now? Right, like these selfie sticks are popular. Great, let's get everybody to use this. But this is not, this should not be popular. This should be something else. That's the thing that's scaring me is that what we started with this conversation, Lena, is that these people don't know what they're talking about. They're just, they think they're doing the right thing. The scariest thing is like, um, you know, they say like, what is it? The path to hell is like paved by good intentions or whatever. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Like, yeah. when I see some of these videos of... Um, and like usually white liberal Americans yep. screaming and they're wearing, and it makes me sick because they're yep. wearing my traditional clothing, oh you know, my like my, my black and white scarf. I That's... can't even, I can't even wear that now without being seen as some crazy leftist, which is sick to me. I can't even wear my own shit without being seen as some leftist yeah. or some they 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 person. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. So, okay. you know, wow. if I yes. see these videos where they're, you know, they're, they're clearly not Arabic, they're clearly yep. not Muslim, and they're yep. yelling at a Jewish person yep. and calling them all sorts of horrible names, yep. it makes me so sick because I actually Thank had you. to step away from a lot of my Muslim friends growing up because they were just naturally anti-Semitic. Yes. They just were like, I remember we were sitting in a cafe and they're like, oh, that, that Jewish whatever, da -da 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 -da. Wow. like just seeing her out the window. I'm like, you don't even know who she wow. is. But just extremely anti-Semitic, yeah. um, and that's just like ingrained in that yep. culture. Yep. So it's just like it's really sad to see now that America is like dissolving. You know, because well, the anti-Semitism is you know, you know, I I I am actually uh, my family's Jewish. I'm I'm I was raised mm. Christian, but I I'm actually in the process of converting to Judaism, I not because no of religion, but more because my family, my wife and my child, we raised as Jewish the child but that being said i just like the spiritual aspect of it more than i'm not very religious if that makes sense mm -hmm. i'm more of a spiritual energy giving out good energy to the world but that being said more there's tons of anti-semitism now it's like it opened the door for people yeah. to just be okay with being anti-semitic right it's scary so wow so i was going to ask you about the scarf thing that what is mm. it called the kifa kif yeah, it's every every country has different like name okay. for it, but in yeah. in Syria we call it a hatta. Okay. I don't know. It's just okay. something you throw on your shoulders. Right. But sure. It's like it's supposed to cover you from the sun. It's supposed to, like right. I used to genuinely wear it just because I was cold. I would wrap sure. it around and just have like a cozy scarf. But now I'm like, yeah. I I have to think twice. Like think like because right. I'm like. <laughs> It's just weird. It's just weird. Well, it must be weird also because now it's associated with these free Palestine, queer for Palestine. It's associated with something very extremist now here right. in this in this in this country. I don't know about there, but I'm talking about here in America. And I saw it on Amazon. <laughs> saw them. <seven>. No. <laughs> oh no. Yes. I don't know, Alan. I think I was looking it up. I was kind of studying about it, and then it's oh like, my like, god, it makes me sick. It makes me sick. It I makes know. me sick. Oh I know. God, right next sick. to the LGBT pride wear. I was like, oh god. Are you so no, like, I'm serious. God, it makes I'm me serious. sick. That actually, that's sick. That's like corporate manipulation to the max. There you go, friend. What are you doing? It's like sick. literally a piece of cloth that is that's associated. Right. Like it was a cultural garb, but now it's associated with religious terrorism. On... That is yeah. that has nothing to do with gayness, and you're gonna put it next to a rainbow. <laughs> 
Good job, Amazon. You're freaking smart. Well, here we live in the capitalist country. So, you know, they're going to just Whatever take sells. <laughs> they see all these kids on campus. Where are they getting them from? They're all buying them on Amazon. No. I, you can't no. write this shit, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing so I don't cry because, you know, like, I'm very sensitive to this. I'm topic. sick. I'm sick. Yeah. Like, because yeah. I have to laugh, too. I have a really sick sense of humor. So do I. Everything <laughs> is just... God, because you know they were talking about like all the tents, you know that they have like they're like all the tents look the same, and now like yep, yep. it's all funded by Amazon. Yep, totally. Or somebody's funding this, don't you think too? Don't you think somebody, somebody's funding a lot of this? You know, stuff. I'm. It might sound crazy, but I'll say it anyway. No, it I wouldn't be surprised if an actual like far right nationalist group was funding all of this. I because either. like I said, yep. the more they yep. allow all this craziness, right. the longer they let an encampment. It's just statistics. The longer a couple of teenagers right. are there, the the more likely there's gonna be a window broken or That's someone, right. you know, in a fight. Just let them let them rile themselves up and then we're gonna go win the election. No, you, you, you hit it on the head. That's exactly what they're doing. And I keep saying to everybody, I can again lay a lot of this onto the trans space. I'm like, we have nuts now pretending they're trans, right? They're going into women's prisons and they're like, I'm trans. And you're like a six foot 10 dude with a gigantic penis. And you're like, I'm a woman. And they let you in the prison. And I'm like, this is not trans. This is something else, people. But, you know, I hate to equate the two, but if you understand what I'm saying. Do you saying, think someone paid those guys? Something's no, no, I mean, they would all. take the money, they could no. take. I mean, if they're like a criminal, no, what I think is this we have self ID, so like anyone can say they're trans, even in prison. Right. And in California, we're so liberaled out the ass that oh, they say they're trans, they're trans, and then we got to put them in the prison. I'm like, what this is so ins, but it's the same thing that's going to happen, it's going to bottom out, and then all trans is right. off the table, right? And even that's for I, somebody, I truly fear that too, because like that's right. You know, I, I I'm seeing that on both sides because, like, I I'm very That's much right. about like protecting women and all that stuff. Me too. Me but too. then on the ones on the other hand, I'm like, I want people to express themselves and be happy of and course. be safe and, and be who they yeah. are. And, and it's just like, but then it's the people. That's why I was asking. Do you think someone paid them? Like some some random conservative? Like, yeah, go pretend to be a lady in the prison, yeah. like you, so we can rile you never up know. Some, it's just That's so right. crazy how this stuff happens. I mean, but... we don't even know the same with what's going on on these campuses. Are these kids being paid? What's the incentive? What is incentivizing these young people? I can't imagine that the young people are being paid on um, during the protests. I mean, most... they're being incentivized. Something is making them want to join Free Palestine without even doing any research. Because if they did research and they really listened to all sides of the story, they might not want to be in that space. But mm -hmm. I feel like something is not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, why? Why are so many of these kids part of that? It's it's just social acceptance. Wow. And um, that's wow. the only thing. Social acceptance. Wow. Fear that's of speaking scary. out. That if is... you if you ask most of these people what they actually believe in, they're not going to know. That's it's right. because their friend and whoever posted Free, Free Palestine. So I'm going to yeah. post Free Palestine. And that's in this right. day and age, there's so much information that it's easy to just not look it up. Because, oh, that's I'll right. find out. Like, yeah, I'll find out from somebody, whatever. Like, people just are willfully ignorant. That's and right. They it's social acceptance. Just That's like so in sad. um, you know, during like the Black Lives Matter stuff, if you didn't yeah. post a black square, then you're a bad person. <laughs> Remember that? I like, actually did. I'm I'm guilty. I did. I did. Because I am a I'm a liberal at heart and I want I everyone. was going after I'm, I'm I'm the first one to villainize myself. Like I was going <laughs> after people like crazy. Like, I was like white men are the worst. Totally. And I'm literally my boyfriend's a white guy. <laughs> It's funny, isn't it? Hang me, liberals. I know, I'm, totally. I'm guilty. No, but yeah. So <laughs> I was like, I was like, white men are the the the, the worst, the scourge yeah. of the earth, and yeah. I was there. So that's why I understand these kids. I that's I was right. on the other side. So that's why I'm like, I I I'm not like, oh, you're you're dumb or you're whatever. I'm just no. kind of like, you have really good intentions, but you really just don't know where you're walking. You're you're That's you're right. just you're just following the crowd in a, in, right. in a direction, yes. and you believe that you're trying yes. to bring liberation, freedom, yes. and everyone should have freedom and everyone should have liberation. But the people that you're fighting for, yes, if they have full control, they will not fight for your freedom and liberation.
that's and that's right. the main point. That's, that's the main difference brilliant. between, um, you know, like the progressive West and, you yeah. know, the religious yeah. Middle East. Yeah. Um, when they have total control, they're not fighting for other people. They're fighting for their beliefs. That's right. And their ideologies. That's right. So. I always wonder, what do these people actually think they're going to achieve? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, wipe out Israel. Okay. And then what? what what's next? Where do the Jewish people go? And right. are you actually really thinking about what this means? Why hasn't the two-state solution been accepted? Why haven't we sort of tried to figure out how to both live side by side together? But the Muslim, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. I believe that they don't want that. Hamas yeah. does not want that. Yeah. They don't want freedom and a solution. They want complete dominance and the wipe out the complete dis destruction of the Jewish people. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, like with the chanting, like from the river to the sea, like, right, right. They'll say as much as they want. Oh, it's just a figure of speech. But again, no. And I've I've had this argument since I was a teenager with my my sure. friends back in the day in Dearborn. I'd be like, well, what if 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 Israel is destroyed? What happens to all the people that were just born there? They That's had right. nothing to do with any of They're just born there. What? That's it's not right. their fault. Yeah. Oh, they have to go find some somewhere else. Then then we're just as bad as what you're claiming them to be like you there don't you see go. that so like sometimes during these paths of trying to find the good you become the villain like you literally become the villain and i want the, these kids to see that that they're not doing the right thing they're becoming the villain by trying to expel people out of their home like and you said it yourself the two-state solution is not gonna work no. it has not worked because yep. there's just integral racism and hatred. That's right. On both sides. Like I can't on both say sides. It's, not on, it's, no. just, it's on both sides. I and agree. It's, it's, for, it's for very good reason because they're very, yeah. very different people. That's right. And, and, and Israel is like the only liberal democracy in the Middle East right now. So they're kind of like, we're tired of seeing you guys walking around all free and stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I know. it's. I genuinely don't know how this is going to be resolved. But but know? the thing that I, I get that because, you know, Israel is a democracy. It's I could, I went there. I was mm. open with open arms. I spoke all over Israel as a trans man. Right. Can you imagine? I was invited to all kinds of spaces. People That's celebrated so cool. me there. I could never do that in Gaza or no. anywhere around that. But people in the queer community who are so obsessed with being free Palestine, I'm like, oh, do you even understand what you're saying? Do you understand you could go to Israel? Good luck going to the other space. Now, that being said, look, I don't, I believe people are allowed to have their own opinions. I do. Even if it's anti-gay, even if it's anti trans what I don't believe is that you want to kill me. That's right. not okay. You do not have to believe in my lifestyle. I don't believe in your lifestyle. Just don't kill me, bro. Yeah, you just can't kill me. It's that easy. <laughs> I mean, go ahead and have your beliefs. That's perfectly what, why I'm a person of freedom of speech, religion, right. all of that. But you can't bring death to the next level. And you can't say we're going to wipe out a whole group of people because uh -huh. we don't believe in them. So those things won't, won't be okay with me. If there was a more peaceful, trying to find a peaceful solution, then I think people might understand things more. But I guess what I, what I'm trying to get here is, I'm just shocked at the amount of white, right, liberal people are pro-Palestine when they don't. That to me, pro-Palestine means pro-Hamas. That's what it means. Right, to but me. that's what I was. Gonna, I was gonna say they're not even pro-Palestine. Some of them will literally say pro-Hamas. <gasps> I haven't heard they'll, anyone they'll, say that. No, they'll they'll literally say I'm pro-Hamas. I'm, oh I'm Hamas. Our freedom fighters. What? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They are. That's what I'm talking about right there. That and I want to and I want to reiterate that this is something that I was also believing when I was wow. younger. That Hamas are freedom fighters and Israel are oppressors. And if Hamas bombs something, it's because they're just revolutionary like freedom fighters, like the Black Panthers or whoever else. Freedom like, for what? Freedom, freedom for, for what? Palestine. That Hamas is trying to bring the liberation of Palestine, but really, but but they run Palestine. Don't now they, they run... do. Now they do. But yeah. back when I was a kid, they weren't. They were. They, they were just kind of like a guerrilla group on the street. They were like they were a terrorist group running around. So know, how like... was Palestine created? How do you understand how Palestine was right. created? And the people of Palestine are all Arab, are they not? Mm -hmm. So where did those people come from? 
Did they come from Egypt and Jordan and all the other spaces and then sort of occupied Palestine? I mean, I'm trying to do a lot of research because I, I, I'm the yeah. guy who wants to know my shit before I start to sort of argue. But that being said, Hamas, I mean, didn't the people of Palestine vote Hamas in as the sort yeah, of... Yeah, that's, that's a very recent new thing. Right. Like, like again, like within the past, uh, I, I'm not sure, that's okay. within the past like decade or so. When I was, I'm talking about when I was a kid, yes. and I remember, yes, um, because I grew up with this. Hamas was just a freedom fighter Got it. group among amongst Got the it. Arabs, and then they so became it's kind of like I can compare them to like the Black Panthers. Got it. Got it. Got it. You know, it's like yeah. they used violent means. Some people loved them. Some people hated them. Sure. But sure. it's almost like if we as a nation had voted the Black Panthers into power, right? Like as that's as right. as. So that's basically what, and then they became extreme, extreme, that's you know, right. extremists. So that's basically what happened. Um, growing up as a kid, I knew Hamas as a small group. Like it was never as big as ISIS. It was never as big as any of them. Now right. they're just like huge and they became huge. bigger when they got voted into power because they, they were given political power by the Palestinian right. people. And that's, that's right. what, that's what kind of catapulted everything is when right. they got political power. Right. Um, so, so could I ask you this question? Thank you for that. Could I ask yeah. you this question? Not to say that you know the answer to it, but so here we have Palestine that are air, an Arab space. Mm -hmm. How come none of the other Arab countries are opening their doors to let the Palestinians come in? We don't know. That's been um, that's, that's been a debate since, again, since I was younger. I remember seeing my dad and all the other Arab uncles sitting around smoking hookah or whatever arguing right. about arab politics and they'd be right. like why don't the arab countries step yeah. in and they would just smite israel yeah i don't like we don't know something interesting something isn't right um you know either the arab countries like this ongoing conflict because it maybe supports their ideologies okay um maybe the the leaders of those of those Arab um, countries aren't actually against Israel. Maybe they're like, That's you know, undercover. So or they they know something we don't know, right? So there's just so many like variables. But yeah. like again, growing up all these years, there's it's just Israel is surrounded by Arab countries. That's like, right. It, it would have taken them like two seconds to just end the entire the entirety yeah. of Israel and then just dissolve it and then turn it into Palestine. And That's right. But they didn't do that. So why? It's just a why? continual war. We don't know why. And I, I, I can't answer it. Yeah, great. I, but I, all I know you. is that my whole life I've seen like, um, yeah. it's between Israel and the Arab countries. They didn't yeah. provide aid and they didn't take the Palestinians. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's they bizarre. Don't really have a leg, they don't have a leg to stand on, basically. That's right. That's why the whole thing just is something... I don't know. It's frustrating because here we are in our own country, right? Mm -hmm. In our own country where we are on some level, I'm going to use the word siding, uh, especially the young generation with a group of terrorists. Look, I, I feel for the people there. Don't, I don't I think we all do. I don't think yeah. people are like bomb them and kill all these people. You know, they're using children and women as these sort of talking points. Right. But what if, even men are dying people. It's not just women. Yeah. A lot of people are being killed. In the name of what? What? Why is this? Why? So I don't know. I guess I'm just saying, like, it's sad to me that that you know people have to be killed. No one wants this, but it's. What about both sides? We need to talk about both sides. Right. Death is bad in general. Um, in general. And I I just wish that that would just be something that people would talk about because me too. I'm so I'm so tired of, of seeing Palestinian people like I'm so glad those Jewish people died and then Disgusting. the Jewish and then then the, the, oh so glad that like the, the just, it, yeah totally that's that Agreed. will never like that will never bring nope. peace um and especially nope. now that you're having like American people celebrating God. October 7th like yeah that was like an act of resistance like yeah. I have my friends friend my cousins died I I know people that died in that so shame on we also still have hostages no one talks about the hostages it's always about like Gaza and the children and bombing and Israel's bad and I'm like but wait a minute here somebody started this They're, yeah <laughs> it literally was started with a b boom and then of course, game on. You think Israel's just going to stand there like nothing? Of course not. What? 
If someone something... dropped a bomb on us, do you think that we're just going to be like, okay, what are we right. going to do? We're going to retaliate. One thing, thing I heard recently, and I don't know how accurate this is, but maybe you'd like to look into it. Yeah. That it, it, it costs more money for Israel to have huh. a violent neighbor than it is for them to just like get rid of them. Do you, have you heard this before? Wow. It's, it costs more money for Israel to actually like maintain this stalemate between them and Hamas. It's sure. kind of like imagine the energy it takes. Like if you have someone running at you and you're just holding them. Yeah. And you're just right. holding and holding and holding, holding, as opposed to just throwing them away one good time. That's right. Giving them one good push and then they're yeah. out of your life. Yeah. Israel is just holding and holding and and so yeah we're just bleeding money the american people were bleeding honey to this to this conflict we sent it's billions insane. of dollars that's right so i don't know that's how right. accurate that is or 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 what it would look like but that's well, basically what i read is that it takes more money to just like have this stalemate well you know? I, I hear you and but then again that's because there's innocent people involved right if we just drop a bomb and wipe out right. gaza who right who, who's really going to, because Hamas is hiding in all the tunnels while all the people are getting blown away. People don't see that. They're literally putting the women and children in front of them, right? Yeah. They're just like, and then they're going, look, Israel's bombing women and children. I'm like, that's not happening. And also, isn't Israel have the right to defend itself? Don't they yeah. have the right to do that? It's a war, people. It's a war. And it's a war that's been going on, Lena's telling you, forever since she was a kid. Yeah. It's been going on. How do we stop it? The first thing that needs to happen, honestly, is these encampments need to stop. Like, I think the first thing that I want to see is Americans being fucking grateful that they live in America. Oh, I think I love you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's Thank the first thing I saying... want to see. Thank you. Um, And I didn't really Thank go you. into my own story because, yeah. again, this is not about me. But I've experienced a whole lot of hardship, and part of that was living on the street. Mm -hmm. And when I see people, like, you know, fighting for another country, I'm like, you need to be fighting for the homeless on this country here. Um, you need to be fighting for, and I'm I'm a teacher too, like, I see that yeah. the public school education is totally broken. Totally. Um, like, there's just so much that we need, to, we need to fix about our country right here. That's right. And the youth are distracted. They're extremely distracted. Yes. And I'm great. scared that they're so distracted that they're going to lose the country that they have right in wow. front of them. And before they even realize it, they're going to look up and they're going to be like, wow, how come I can't walk out of the street without wearing X, Y, and Z? That's right. How come I can't think X, Y, and Z? How come I can't post X, Y, and Z? It's Thank already you. like that in Canada. Yes. Where people are getting arrested for things that they just post on social media. It's our neighbor. It's going to come over here. 100%. And if people don't wake up, it's... It's not going to get better. And that's why I'm like, I have a career. I have whatever that I'm trying to do. This has nothing to do with it. I'm here. I'm just going to shout. And, and you know, like, I just want to shout this from the rooftops. I hope someone hears it and they will. takes it and, and, and like, absurd, absorbs it, you know, like. But uh, that's why your voice is so important. Because first off, you come from a space of Muslim, right? Then you're not. Then you had, tr I would love to bring you back on and talk about your own life story, if that's possible. Because yeah. I would like to know, you know, the, the extreme, I came from extreme space too, homeless, all of that stuff. I think it's why we have the attitude we have, right? Because we really did have to, that's why I believe in struggle. I mean, these kids need to struggle. I don't care. Oh, he can't struggle his gender or identity. I'm like, what? that's a bunch of crap let the kid struggle <laughs> yeah what well, it's not gonna hurt the kid to struggle it's just not and i'm sure you understand that as a teacher struggle is everything yeah, yeah. um it's a major con uh character builder for sure a hundred percent you're gonna you can see the kids that had to struggle and the kids that didn't don't have to struggle and that the attitude i think that a lot of these really very big universities like harvard and yale and you got to have a shit ton of money to get in these spaces those are the kids that are protesting you don't see like the poor kids who are hungry and starving and like yeah. barely can, you just don't see them out there doing free palestine right because they have to go to work <laughs> or like and also yeah. maybe they have a different perspective of this country and maybe when you're not so entitled maybe you are grateful to live in this country i lived in mexico for 10 years not because mm. that was a bad thing it was a great thing but i lived out of the country and i've traveled the whole world and let me tell you this is the place to live okay but now it's getting creepy here yeah it's getting bad we're it's, we're, we're not 
really a great space to live on some of our democracy is out of control our government's out of control our, our even i believe our our um political parties are a mess a total mess it's kind of wild that like we have the the greatest democracy, democracy that the world has ever seen but we only have a two party system i know but places like Pakistan have like have had female presidents and et cetera, et cetera. So that's something we definitely need to work on. That's right. So again, if if the young people will just challenge or move their energy and their attention over to America, I think that there's so many things that we could accomplish. But they're being taught to hate America. They are. I yeah. see it. I see the language coming out of them. And I know what's happening in those universities and the, what the professors are teaching these people. Capitalism is bad. No, it isn't. I wouldn't have what I have here. Now, there are parts of capitalism that are shitty, but don't try it. The, I got to create this. I didn't even graduate high school, friend. I'm, I'm not even a, a, right? I didn't graduate. I was like, you're going to be nothing. I'm something because yeah. I, I made myself something because of the opportunities of this country to let me do something so this idea that yeah. capitalism is bad that cologne this whole country is co colonized i'm like bitch the whole world is colonized, colonized. <laughs> what are you talking about literally also, the whole world the whole world also my friend if you're so worried about calling then give it back <laughs> go ahead and no they're not willing to give it back they're just willing to flap their so that being said it's comical on some level they don't know you know it's funny i think it's this thing that you don't know what you have when you're living in it, right? It's yeah. Like you have to be outside of it to f understand the privilege or what you have to 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 live in it. Does that make se sense? Yeah, I want to say like one thing I wanted to mention to you specifically, especially with the the transgender world that you yeah. operate in. Yeah. Um, and and it also is with this new ideology that. I just wanted to say, like, when when you experience, like, religious extremism and also, like, being homeless, you cannot escape gender. Yeah. That's as a great. woman. That's, that's great. Just, I just want to put that in there. Thank you. You cannot escape your gender. Nope. Um, I'm personally 5 foot 11, and when I was homeless, I cut my hair short, and I would do everything possible to look like a man. And I still experience sexual violence because I of have course. those parts. I That's have those right. parts. And also yeah. in the Middle East, you could look like a guy, whatever, whatever, whatever. They're still going to try to get you married. You know, they're still going to like, right. so, so this whole liberal ideology when it comes to gender, it does not fit um, with like Islam and all that stuff. And actually Thank like you. reality. So yeah, we have to, we have to face reality um, that like our physical parts are still going to be there at the end of the day. And, well, and yeah, people who have not experienced sexual violence or that kind of thing where like gender is a real thing. I, I brought yes. it up because like you're talking about people living in a bubble like, yes, people who have not grown up in a space where like your gender is everything about you, then they're going to think, oh, yeah, I can just That's be right. whatever. But yeah, so this is a there, there are different realities out there for sure, especially being female. OK, because we know yes. right now there is a war on women. I don't care what anybody says. And, and it is coming from not only the trans community, it's coming from this stuff here is coming from so many avenues. And I won't tolerate that. I am a biological female. OK, so you know what? I didn't change my sex. I look like a dude. Right. No one would ever know. It's like, uh, but I still have a physical female body. And it's, right. I, you know, I talk about it all the time and I'm very honest about it because I have to be because I, I'm still going to be lumped in with you, by the way. And when I was on the street, same thing happened to me. I lived on the streets, too. I could look like a man all I wanted. They can smell it. <laughs> right. Lack of... Right. Literally, <laughs> literally, 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 it's it's scary. But like biology is real. That's that's right. Friend, and friend. and like real life is real and real you life know, is real. Yeah. So that's and that's what's the creating of false realities is what leads to like extremist ideologies. Brilliant. And so that's brilliant. That's the, the, the main thing that our Islam and the leftists have in common is they like to create false realities wow. to support their their agenda. Wow. Brilliant. So like, and and whatever, whatever, you know, little false reality they want to create to support their agenda, they will create it. Yeah, that's right. To create their agenda, which is what's happening. Yeah, and it's very, it. if there was one thing, as we're going to wind down here, if there was one, I could spend hours with you. If there was one thing that you would want to say to the young people who are 
uh, protesting and doing all this? Is there something, is there a message that you would want to say to them or, or not even, even, even maybe the world or. Mm. I think you said so many great talking points, friend. And, you know, you basically said a lot of it in the beginning, but. Well, I would say first to, I guess I'm going to do like tough love right now. Yeah. Like if this was like my younger sister out there on the protest right. line. Right. First of all, if you're not willing to get your ass beat by a cop, am I allowed to swear? Yes, okay. you are, friend. Okay. <laughs> if I'm, okay. If you're not willing to get your ass beat, if you're not willing to like literally be a freedom fighter and go to the ends of the earth and get jailed and lose your life, if you're not that committed, then just walk away right now because you're a poser. You're a poser. Second point, um, if you truly want to be peaceful, then find it within yourself to look to your neighbor and try to get them to stop hating on other people that are outside of your group. If you really want to, if, if you're, if you are finding yourself in that group of protesters and you're like, I want to make a change, then go walk around and be like, let's find some like Jewish people, like have lunch with them or something. I don't know, like whatever it could possibly be, just do something as a group. Um, that, this is not an elegant outro, but it's beautiful. Are you kidding? The last thing is just fighting is never going to lead to peace. More violence is never going to lead to peace. Okay. Um, and until you realize that you have to fight for the grass that you're on right now and make, make your land more peaceful and beautiful before like fighting somebody else's wars, then we're going to be constantly in conflict because you have to basically like find the peace where you're at. Um, Got you. It's, it's, it's almost, almost impossible for these um, university students to change the political outcome of a country in the Middle East. So what they need to do is to find camaraderie and, and build communities. Um, they need to, you know, like do, do real things like start food banks, start libraries, start, um, skill sharing, start, you know, just whatever it is that, that they can do in their actual community, all that energy that they're channeling, channeling towards shouting, building up tents, making, making signs, channel it into something else. That's what I did when I left the, the George Floyd protests. I actually channeled all my energy into plants and I learned how to grow because at the end of the day, the earth is what matters. We're, the earth is the only thing that we all have in common. So I went from picket fences and shouting to, I want to grow the best tomato. <laughs> awesome. You see, you see the switch? Totally. Like, like, cause if I can go, if I can grow a really good tomato, then maybe I can grow some extra tomatoes and then maybe I can have some That's tomatoes right. to give to my neighbor. Like Life. that, that is real revolution. That's it's right. It's not about yelling and shouting. It's about growing and building right Beautiful. here where you're at. Wow. That's such a great statement. And it's, it says because tomatoes are life. Mm. Food is life. Every human being on this earth needs food in order to food and water. So, wow, what an amazing, beautiful statement. I know somebody will hear it. Some young person will watch this and say, what am I doing? Why aren't I putting myself? And that, that's why I need young people like you to, to step up and say these things because you were literally in that and now you came out of it and you're like, hold up here. It did not. Do you feel like it did anything for you to do those protests? I don't think I changed anything. You know, in the scheme of society okay. with the Black Lives Matter things, I don't think I should. Sure. I don't think I don't think anyone's any less racist. That's and right. And if if there were racist cops in the force, they're not going to be any less racist. No, that's and right. And the good cops that are in the force, they're going to remain good cops. Like it that's literally right. changed nothing. Nothing. I agree. The only thing I have now is back pain. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I do yoga oh, every I'm morning. Sorry. Oh yeah. I'm dead serious. No, but yeah. honestly, I I'll, off camera I'm gonna tell you something. I had bad back pain too. I, I did this thing called gua sha. It mm. totally changed my life. I have no more back pain. I was suff gua suffering for years on your back. 
Okay. Wa- G U to everybody out there. G U A. It's it's a it's a thing that they do scraping. It's an actual thing that they scrape. It's Chinese medicine that they use this tool and they scrape your back and your you know you have fascia in your back. It's the screen oh that God. holds everything in. And my fascia was like this. They screened me. It was crazy. It hurt, but my whole back is better. I, and I've never felt better in my life. For years, I suffered. It's crazy. It works. Oh God, I'm, I'm gonna try that. G U A S H U. G U A S H U. Everybody. So if you have back pain out there, look at or any kind of pain. It works. I believe in that kind of medication. Anyway, I try to, I try to avoid pharmaceutical. That's right. the last resort. And I try to make everything healthy. But. With that, I'll put a link to Amazon so you can buy the scarves. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I will find you. I will find you. I mean, my God, <laughs> well, that's insane. <laughs> You're awesome. I should have worn my scarf just to like. <laughs> you should have. Yeah, actually, and she had queers for Palestine. <laughs> my God. Anyway, friends, thank you so much. I, I feel very connected to you. You're an awesome human being, and so good um, to meet you. thanks for stepping up and having this conversation. I think it's just going to be so p- powerful for people to hear you. And, um, so with that, everybody, live on Wednesday. I'll see you next week. And um, thanks so much. Share this. Leave Lena some beautiful comments. I know you all will because you're all such beautiful, amazing people. People. Um, if, if if you want, I'll leave something and people can contact you or not. We'll talk about that off camera. And and with that, I'll see you guys on the next one. And. <laughs>